So the job today is to mount some solar panels on the roof and feed the solar power directly into the hot water cylinder via a DC element. Uh, you can see on this pie chart most of our mains power goes towards heating the water. 63% on the controlled phase. So I think I should be able to at least halve our power bill by letting the sun heat our water. But before I mount the panels up there I need to strengthen the roof structure. There's been a fire up there at some stage and um, it was never really repaired properly. So come and have a look up here, I'll show you what's going on. So the fire has burned out some of the rafters and the structure under here. It's been repaired, but they didn't add a lot of uh, structural support under here. So I'm gonna run some support plates along the middle here and uh, some uprights to the ridge board and also in the middle of the span where the sole panels will be mounted. Then I'll just add some cross bracing between the two new supports and I think that will uh, give it plenty of strength and bring it back up to code. Not the most fun job, but it needs to be done. Right, that's looking a lot better. I did notice the ridge board was sagging down a bit, especially in the middle, so I just propped it up as I went along, and that's nice and straight now, so that definitely needed doing. All I need to do now is just put a few cross braces along there, and that'll be plenty strong enough. So I've got four solar panels here, uh, 300 watts each maximum, so there's 1200 watts there. The mounts, just aluminium rails, and these L brackets are screwed into the roof with a washer between the roof and the bracket to prevent um, the similar metal reaction. And these just slide on, uh, it goes that way. These brackets just slide on there, and there. And then the solar panel goes on top with an earthing uh, washer in there so that everything's tied together and um, then it can be grounded. It was around about $400 for that lot, uh, so not too bad, all up. Maybe $1,500 for the panels and the mounts. So I've got to have the panels at least half a meter away from the edge of the roof, so the mount will go there and then the panels can go down to there and the mounts they recommend seven mounts per four meter length so just divide them equally along that line That's one rail up, feels quite solid. I put a uh, Sikaflex sealant in there just to, just to make sure it's all watertight.
four panels up, 1200 watts. So I've just got to wire them up now. drain the water out of the cylinder and then I can replace that AC element with a DC. I don't have the right socket for that so I'm going to use a, a big ass crescent. So that's the DC element in place. So that's the solar panel isolator, uh, so I can turn it on and off from down here. So we've got 21 amps there. That's coming straight from the solar panels. And there's 66 volts. It goes up to around about 80 degrees Celsius at the end of a sunny day. So, um, so we're pretty happy with that. So there's two DC heating coils and one AC mains coil in this element. Uh, I've tried a few different wiring configurations and found this one gives us the highest output. I've connected the two DC coils in parallel and two groups of two solar panels in parallel wired straight to the DC coils. This way I only need one set of solar cables. The AC mains element is on a timer so it's only able to come on after 1pm every day. Uh, if it's a sunny day, the thermostat will be open because the solar panels have brought the temperature up above the thermostat setting. So no mains power is used on sunny days. Um, if we have a few cloudy days, the water temperature will drop down, allowing the thermostat to close. And when the timer clicks on at 1pm, this will send power to the AC heating coil. So we do use a bit of mains power on cloudy days normally, um, just to boost it up. Because we've got a DC and AC in the same element, the mains power is going through a B-type RCD residual current device uh, to keep everything safe. So if there's ever a problem, it'll just disconnect the power. So it's been set up for a few months now, and it has more than halved our power bill on average. We're only using about 2 to $2.50 of mains power a day. You can see the water heating controlled phase reduced to 0% because we've had some sunny days lately. Um, before I installed the solar panels, the controlled phase was consuming around 7 kilowatts a day. The beauty of feeding it directly into the hot water cylinder is there's no battery bank to worry about, um, no inverter. It's, you 
basically your hot water cylinder is the battery it's storing all the all the power from the sun so um, it keeps costs down that way and you're not having to worry about um, keeping your batteries topped up and you know replacing them every few years so if you're looking to reduce your power bill and you don't have a spare 20 grand to go fully off grid um, this could be the way to go it was worthwhile for us anyway thanks for watching guys catch you next time